today's video we're going to be doing a full interior restoration on a vintage snowmobile helmet. This one needs a lot of help. So I scored this helmet from a friend of mine. He was just giving it away on Facebook. I traded him a six banger of beer for it, which is, I thought was fair. You know what's cool about these garage or basement finds? Oh, basement. Definitely basement. Um, a lot of times you can get cool extras like this box. It might not seem very exciting, but it's from, it's from 1966. That's totally cool. And also, it came with a vintage visor. And they're just not shaped like this anymore. And that, this one still has good snaps on it, made in the USA, which is really cool. And I should be able to polish it all up and get it nice looking in the end. So on to this treasure. This one's in pretty dire need of some help. It actually looks pretty good under the lights, I think, but it's really, really beat up. It's been repainted. It was um, yellow because it's all scratched up and you can see that there's yellow underneath here. But whoever painted it did it right. I mean, it's definitely like an automotive finish. It's probably Emron or something like that. So onto the problem with this helmet. This has been doctored up over the years, which I don't know, to me it's kind of cool because obviously somebody used this, like, a lot. And that's, that's cool. And this one's got the, the snowmobile neck curtain. The liners totally loose in it. When you take the styrofoam out of a helmet like this, it's all it is, a styrofoam, like a cooler. Um, sometimes, depending on how tight they are, normally they're glued in, or at least stuck in. This one isn't. A lot of times it helps to have a helper just grab the, the straps and open the shell of the helmet up a little bit and it makes it easier to, to spin the liner out of there. But, you know, this one's not putting up too much of a fight. When you do these, just be careful not to bully them. They are vintage and they're delicate. So when you get the the uh, shell or the um, <laughs> coconut cover, the styrofoam out of there, it just leaves you with a shell. Now is a good time to check the chin strap and the rivets and all that kind of stuff and see if it needs any help. Here's a better look at the interior. It's in really rough shape. I'm gonna try to keep this tag. I'm gonna, I'll cut it, that material out, and see if I can clean it up first, the, the uh, tag itself. I'm gonna try to sew that to the top piece of the new liner, just to kind of keep that funky originality to it if I can. If you're not doing a snowmobile helmet, chances are you won't have this ear and neck curtain and everything to deal with, which of course is, is easier. I bet you couldn't get tape today that would stick this long. And it's actually still sticky. That's crazy. I'm trying to keep as much intact as I can because I'm going to be using it as a pattern to make the new liner. Alrighty, that's all off now. Now we'll just peel this off of the styrofoam. Kind of weird, the same material that keeps your beer cold keeps your brain safe. I don't know about that. Okay. Okay, so we are left with this. Helmets always smell like a basement or a garage or a trunk or a whatever, if you're lucky. Kind of stinky. So I washed this and then I misted it with Febreze and it it totally smells fine now. It doesn't, um, 
it's not overwhelming Febreze smell and it doesn't smell like a basement anymore. And I did that with all the other pieces that I could. The top foam pad, I took that and <laughs> plucked all the hair out of it. And then I washed that in warm water and laundry soap and rinsed it, rinsed it, rinsed it, and washed it and rinsed it several times. And that smells like a new piece of foam. And it's a nice shape, so I'm just going to reuse it. It's, uh, it's not falling apart and it doesn't reek, so there's no reason not to use it. And it's the right thickness. And then also with the, uh, the shell of the helmet, too, make sure you wash that. Dirty. Okay. So there's the neck curtain. Now that we've got it flat, you can make a pattern out of it. Normally, I don't think that I would replace this because I'm not going to use this for snowmobiling. But I think for the sake of the video, I'm just going to show how to make it. It's just different than any of the other helmets that I've done. So just for this informational purposes, I think I'll make one. When you look at this, you can see how it was assembled. Like these are all sewn in to the, to the lining. So it didn't scoot around in there, but you can see it was all one flat piece and it was sewn together here. So that's where the main seam is. So I'm going to take that apart to make it lay flat. So if you see one of these vintage helmets that has been restored like this and they want, you know, a couple hundred bucks for it or something, now you know why. If it's done well, it's very time consuming. It's rewarding though. I just, I don't do them to sell them. I just do them because I like vintage helmets. I collect them, and use them. And this is probably, I don't know what, like eighth inch foam, <laughs> something like that. Because this helmet is an XL and I wear a medium, I will probably put maybe half inch foam in there just to try to snug it up on my noggin a little bit. And yeah, that's this piece we can use now as a, a pattern for the new crown piece. I'll have to make it just a hair uh, bigger to accommodate the slightly thicker padding, but that's no big deal. I'm going to make a slight modification on this design, you know, for the sake of um, just for the sake of making it, I'm going to make the neck curtain removable. I'm going to sew some Velcro tabs in here so there'll be tabs on the crown. It's kind of hard to visualize when it's laid out like this, but like for instance, like this is the very center back right here. And we'll say this is over one ear and this is over another ear. So I'll stitch a tab here and here and maybe two on the back and I'll use the, the so soft part of the velcro so it doesn't stick in my hair and I'll never get the helmet off. So I'll put the crunchy pieces of velcro on the uh, the neck thing. That'll be interesting. I have never done it that way but um, that might be kind of cool. So this is the crown piece laid on the crushed velvet. It's on the wrong side of the velvet. So you make sure that this is nice and as flat as you can get it without stretching it. So you want to make sure this is relaxed and this. That way you get a pretty accurate layout here. And I'm marking on the large side. And this is the, the side that I'll be wrapping around the styrofoam shell a little further than it was. So I'm going to cut this really generous on, on this end here. Now I'm just going to make just some marks along like where the actual edge is. Because like I said, I, I haven't done a neck curtain like this before. And I'll also mark all of these seams here. Here's the crown liner and new foam. This is half inch foam. So it's quite a bit thicker than the, the stock stuff. So hopefully that will take up some of the um, gap, you know, being that my head's smaller. I cut this a little long to fold over the shell because I'm doing it a little bit differently. I'm just going to mark it. I'll just roll this back a little bit and mark all along the edges here. Oh, this 
peel this up and kind of should be able to sew that over. This is two-sided tape, 3 8 inch two-sided tape from Sailrite. This stuff is great. If you do anything, projects like this, get yourself a roll of this stuff. It is invaluable. Swanky. Okay, and then we've got our lines marked for the stitching. We end up with is the foam side, obviously, <clears throat> and the good side. Now we're going to test fit the liner into the styrofoam thing. Just line it up. You know, you've got your center point here. Just kind of stuff her on in there. Then line it up the best you can with uh, the edges of the styrofoam because that's how it's going to sit in there. So you want to get that right a little higher. Make sure it's centered too, that seam that you did, the center of the thing. That will fold over like that. But we're just kind of doing a, a test fit here to um, to trim the length out and make sure it's not pulled tight. Like you want it against the shell. You don't want it to be tight across here because you know. So just kind of shove it, hold the center, and then shove the pieces sort of towards the back. You know, so it's nice and tight to the shell. So yeah, it lines up lines up pretty well. It's kind of a little bit fussy to get this all lined up. And the problem is it's not super forgiving. So if you screw this up, it's not going to fit in the uh, shell very well or in the uh, styrofoam. Okay, it's sewn. And then of course, you know, you'll trim all this off. I'm going to kind of mark where the Velcro will go for the um, neck curtain. There it is all trimmed out. So I've sewn three Velcro tabs in there. One, two, and three. So now I'm going to line up the neck curtain piece. Actually, the, that'll be the vinyl piece inside there and line everything all up and mark where the velcro goes for these and then I can sew on the corresponding tabs on here now I'm gonna put in the whatever this is this kind of a weird liner insulation maybe I'm not really sure came out so it's going back in but I use 3M Super 77 it's a great adhesive don't cheap out on this either buy this or the uh, 3M industrial adhesive it's great but uh, make sure that you get the 3M otherwise it just doesn't hold up
and let it tack up about, I don't know, 20 or 30 seconds. I think that'll do. I sewed the label on to the top piece there. So that's ready to go. This is a top foamy piece that's been washed and smells good now. Now I'm getting ready to put the, the crown in, and once I've got it all sitting in there just the way I want it, everything's all lined up, front seam, or front seam, back seam, everything looks good. You know, you want to make sure that it's, you know, down in there and level with the styrofoam. You have to kind of adjust it as you go, but you get the idea. You have to sort of, you know, mess with it and Anyway, good way to keep that in place as you work around and get all the padding just so. Just take a pin or several pins. And when you have one side that's that's lined up and good, I keep getting out of frame here. Just get it down to where you want it. Like that. And then just take a pin and just stick it into the styrofoam a little bit. Don't go all the way through, you'll stab yourself. So now that's in place. And I can do that all the way around at the, you know, at the very base of the crown here, or the very top of the crown, I guess it is. And that way it will allow me to fold this open a little bit and get some spray adhesive a little bit down inside here and then along this edge without this getting all out of whack and twisted around and everything as I go. So I generally do like front, you know, back and front, make sure those are just right. Once you get those in, the rest of it pretty much falls into place. You might have to adjust a little here and there, but it's not bad. And I work in a crisscross pattern. It just seems to help keep things from like rotating around. I'll just put a couple more in just for good measure. There. And that'll keep everything all in place. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I, I set anything round in just a thing of tape. That way it keeps it from rolling around. Makes it easier to keep in place. And if you get the glue on your fingers, which you will, um, rubbing alcohol takes it off, but don't touch the fabric with your gluey fingers because it will not come off of it. Okay, now everything's all tacked out. This is just plastic. You can use a grocery bag, paper, whatever. I just want to make sure that I didn't get any um, glue in the interior when I'm trying to do this outside edge. It's not a real big deal if you get a little on here. It's no biggie, but really I'm trying to just get it along here so I can bring that edge of material over and stick it to it. And I'll do the same thing with the pins. I'll pull it over, stick it, and put the pin in and do that all the way around. Make sure that stays in place, almost like a clamp so it um, doesn't pull back off of there before it's set.
Some of this is really going to have to stretch just because of the shape. This is a little bit of an odd shape for the um, styrofoam. Normally they're just kind of the pudding bowl. Just take your time and make sure it's neat and all that. When they when the material like wants to pucker like this and stuff, just try to get it flat, as flat as you can, because when you go to install this back in the shell, it'll give you trouble if it's too bulky. Definitely an improvement over the original. So I'll just let this sit now for, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes, whatever. So we're going to use the vinyl for our neck curtain, which is what it used to be. This is a, a mark here, and there's another one right here. Make sure that you're marking those. Those are alignment marks. And this is the back of the vinyl. I don't know if you can tell in the video. The way you make this symmetrical is we've just marked half of the piece. Just because it's so hard to keep it from moving around when we're tracing it. I'll take this and I'll cut it out and then fold it over and then trace my cutout piece. That way it'll be exactly symmetrical. Gotta make sure you fold it exactly, or as exactly as you can, on the uh, center lines that you made. There. There's the piece for our neck curtain. Mm -hmm. We need the vinyl on the outside, and then the um, crushed velvet for, on the liner. So I'm just going to use my vinyl piece that I cut as the um, template for the inside. And it... there. Now we're doing the foam for the neck curtain. I don't want to pin the vinyl because you'll see the pin marks, obviously. The way you work on stuff like that. As you can use binder clips, clothes pins, um, bobby pins, whatever. Just anything that doesn't pierce that. I'll just take some pins and pin the fabric to the foam. That, that'll be just fine. For the neck curtain I'm sewing on corresponding pieces of velcro, the, the crunchy side, that will go inside the helmet to attach the neck curtain. So this is, again, that two-sided tape. I think that'll line up fairly well. So Velcro is sewn on. Now it's time to assemble the neck curtain. This is the edging. Mm 
regular old hairpins are great for um, stuff you don't really want to pierce or it's too thick or whatever like in this case when you're coming to the end you, you want it to overlap just fold the end over like that do a pinch press so it stays folded and you want to fold it over the starting point and try to line it up neatly Pins out of here now. Looks pretty good. Not bad. I'm going to put this into the shell of the helmet because I have to have this in place to make the new ear pads that I'm making that so this fits without the neck curtain in. Once that's in there like that, then I like to take a piece of like gorilla tape or something. And I put one there and I try to get one on the front. Now I'm making the removable cheek pads and I want them to just velcro in here with just three dots of velcro. So there'll be a dot of velcro, let's see, here, one there and one there. So I've got the, the pad here. This is just uh, one inch foam. I'm just going to test fit it in like that. That's how that will sit in there. Make some marks where I want to put the Velcro tabs. Putting the seam at the at the top of this, you know, it wraps around like that. Normally I would put it on the back, but because I'm putting the Velcro on there, I can't put the the um, seam back there. I have. Or, you know, I made the uh, marks for the Velcro there, one there, one there, and one there. I'll just stick them on here, get it ready to be sewn on. Velcro tabs are all sewn on, everything's lined up and ready to be glued together. And then for these ends, try to cut them as straight off of the corners as you can. 
And don't cut too far in. Make sure it just, just goes to the foam. Do the same on both ends. And just a little shot of glue on each of these end pieces. And since this is the, <clears throat> the front of your ear pad, you want to make sure that that goes in last. So just like that. That one on top. Like that. That makes a neat box down from the front. And there's the cheek pad. Now I'm ready to put the cheek pad in. These are self-adhesive Velcro dots. Super sticky. So I'll just stick them on here, sticky side up. And line it up like front. I suppose it doesn't really matter how you do it, however, however you can whatever's most comfortable, I guess. I'm just gonna pull the cheek pad out because uh, the glue is wet and I don't want the cheek pad to get all squished. So those are the little Velcros in there. So now there are two different ways that this helmet can go. You can do it with the cheek pads in, like this. And I can take the cheek pads out. And then the neck curtain can go in. So hopefully that helps you through your vintage helmet restoration and uh, gives you some idea of what's involved. As always, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.